Hello there. I'm at Kitt Peak Visitor Center and I'm inside the 20 inch dome with the RC uh, 20 inch with an FSQ on top of that. And that's what we're going to be using for this example. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about backyard EOS and DSLR imaging. So let's go ahead and bring up the program. Okay, um, this is actually how it starts up, and uh, normally, by default, it's usually in a red mode like this, but for this video, I'm going to keep it in daylight time. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the settings, um, and this is where, this the help file is going to be really useful here on what you want to set all this to, but the only thing I care about is actually um, where I want to save the folders. So I'm actually going to create a, uh, a folder here. Um, actually it's already here. Uh, and select that. And this is where all the images will actually be saved. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Now when you connect the camera for the first time Backyard EOS will ask you what kind of Canon camera is it. Is it a 20DA? Is it a 60DA? Is it a camera that was made after 2014? Um, however, if you once you've chosen that and you're still with that same camera, it won't ask that again. We have the 60DA. So um, that's what actually connected. Okay. Uh, one thing you'd have to do to do astronomical f um, pictures is to set the camera to bulb. That's one thing you'd have to manually do on the camera. Now, if you want to take exposures less than one second, like one twenty-fifth of a second, I will tell you that you'll need to set it on manual um, to make that work. Uh, I'm not going to do that now. so. So this is just information. It really isn't that important. Um, this is uh, where you end up taking the photos, and we'll get into that later. So the first thing we need to do is focus. And um, so let's go ahead and go over to a focus star. And I've actually focused everything just to speed up the tutorial a little bit. Okay, when you click frame and focus, it will actually uh, bring a live image of what it's doing right now. And this box here is where we are actually framed. Now you can see there's a star here and there's one here. If I wanted to move this box around, all I do is double click and then I can actually move it anywhere I want. And as you can see, the star is coming into the, on the right side. And when it's there, just double click again. And that locks that box there. Now at this point, you can start manually focusing on however you focus the telescope. Uh, the full width half max, the ideal with behind here is you want to get these numbers as small as possible. Um, full width half max um, is good. Half flux diameter is actually better. This is something that Focus Max invented when it came out. Uh, it's less sensitive to scene conditions. But once you have the, the star focus, then you're ready to exit this frame. And we can just go ahead and click this again. So that's basically all there is to focusing. Um, it's very quite simple. So now the next thing is we want to frame our object. So we're going to go ahead and move to an object. And I already have it here. And let's go ahead and move to it. OK. Um, what you want to do is you want to set the ISO really high, as high as you can, because we, we just want to do a preview here. We want to see what, what's in there. Oh. 
let me get into here real quick. Um, these are actual settings and the one that's really important here, here you can actually take light frames, you could take dark frames, flat filled bias, just like a regular CCD camera. I mean, a digital camera really is a CCD, it just uses a CMOS. But here's what's important. You determine where you want to save it. Do you want to save it to the camera? Do you want to save it to the computer? Um, I always use the computer. That's just me. Okay, so I'm going to have the setting on bulb. And you can see there's other settings here. Um, and this is the number of exposures. And we're going to do a preview over here. In, in other words, it's not going to save anything to the computer. It's just going to take a picture and preview it. And um, one second was a little short, so we need to fix that. Uh, we'll see a one second exposure, which won't tell us much, really. So let's go to a 20 second exposure. And we'll do a preview again. Backyard EOS is a very, very easy program. And I have one place that's using it at a remote observatory. Um, friends of mine, actually. Okay, so our exposure is almost done. And here we can see the Veil Nebula. So you can see this is what we have want to have framed. Um, here at Kid Peak, we actually um, use a, a very good pointing model. And we have an ME2, and we actually turn on pro tracking. So we almost can take a 10-minute unguided exposure with the FSQ. It's quite amazing. But in this example, we are going to guide. OK, so once you've determined how you want to frame the object and you're ready to take a, an image of it, um, then you can start planning. Now let me show you a couple other things. Um, this loop here, when you select on it, actually, I'll go ahead and do this real quick. Um, when I click on this and it's highlighted like that and I do previews, it will take continuous images. Now, I guess the advantage of this is for framing purposes it's because every time it takes a new image, you can, you can see and update it. Now, when you're done, you just click abort and it will abort it. Now the thing that I tend to do sometimes, and, I, and you may do the same things, you've got to remember to uncheck that. And when it's not highlight, like, highlighted that way, then it's um, not active. Okay, so in, for this example, just to keep the exposure to, to things simple, I'm just going to do three exposures. And they're just going to be um, 20 seconds each and we're going to keep the ISO at 6400 but when you go when in the real world when you're really wanting to capture you want to use a lower one uh, 800 is good uh, for the Canon 60DA I have a Canon 7D Mark II and I have more choices here um, so but We'll do, but for this tutorial, we're just going to leave it here so you can see the object. You'll notice that it's showing you frames down here that we've taken. So, okay. Now, um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is be, this this set capture here is going to actually capture the series. This is a plan, by the way. So, just to let you know. So, here I have three exposure three exposures at 20 seconds, 6400. I could actually save this. And if I click this, I can actually give it a plan name for future use, but I'm not going to do that. OK, so we're going to break away for just a minute because I'm going to turn on the guider. Um, and we have an ST402. And we have the plug-in for the camera on the SkyX. Now they've actually revamped this very nicely. Um, this is excellent uh, modification uh, since it was a July 29th release. Okay, so um, basically I'll go ahead and connect the camera. 
and it's connected. And um, I'll, I'll go into the focus tools. And to focus on a guide star, I'm going to set it for two seconds, auto dark, take continuously. Um, so I'll go ahead and click that. And here you can see a star. And again, here at this point, you would want to actually focus your guide star, but I kind of did that in advance to save some time. So I'm going to abort this now. And we're ready to use the auto guide feature. Now, as you can see, this has been redesigned very nicely. So the first thing you'll do is take an exposure. And you'll notice on the ST402 I'm bending it and doing an auto dark. That's generally a good idea. Okay, you'll want to click find. Uh, now you can double click on a star, but it's really better just to click the button and let it do it itself. Um, this one picked one on the edge, but I think that's going to be okay. So once that's done, I'm going to click calibrate. And I have it set already. And what it will do is, is, is it will take a series of exposures and calibrate it. Um, we are using direct guide here. And once it's calibrated, you'll get this little graph that is actually pretty good here. Okay. So now I'm ready to start the auto guiding. So what I'll do is actually take the exposure again. That's always a good idea. And I'll click find the star again. Again, I could double click on it and pick a different one. And then click auto guide. Okay, so here's our guide star, and um, here's our errors, and we don't really care about this right now. So, um, so once it's guiding, uh, then we're ready to take an exposure. So we'll go ahead and take the series. Again, we're at three seconds, uh, th three exposures, twenty seconds, sixty-four hundred, and now I clicked. Um, start the capture. So now actually what it's doing is it's actually uh, capturing the series of exposures. Um, generally 3 is a good one for a short quick um, program. Uh, me and a, one other person has actually take 10 minute exposures and up to 2 hours. Um, so And here's our first exposure. Now you'll notice up here you can use a program called PHD for guiding. So it does support that. That's a free program, I believe. And you can see the histogram over here. Okay, so after this, okay, so um, we're pretty much done. We've taken the series, and to just, just to show you, if I go into this folder, here's all our photographs that we've been taking. And you'll notice the preview actually says preview, and the light actually says light. So these are the real exposures. And they're saving it in the raw camera for format. Um, once you're done, you just disconnect and you're finished. So you have a great evening and be sure to visit Kit Peak Visitor Center.